Welcome back, Fun Nation, to Behind the Bumpers. Joining me today at the Greater Pittsburgh Regional is going to be Team 694 Stike Pulse. They're coming off of a big win at the Hudson Valley Regional and currently ranked number one at the Greater Pittsburgh Regional. Joining me today is Ellen, Rachel, Jaco, and Ian, and they're going to take us through their robot today on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. All right, Ellen, go ahead and take us through your funnel this system. The funnel runs with one crack in electricity with a 3 to 1 ratio and we have belt wall on one side to prevent any jams and speeding up of the intaking process. And on the bottom we have an iron sensor right down here so we can hurry quickly detect when it's uh, inside the shooter. Alright awesome, let's go ahead and feed a coral into this so we can see how this funnel works. Alright, uh, now to the shooter. Uh, just very simple for four sets of rollers. Um, yeah, two inch compliant wheels, or well, 2.25 inch compliant wheels. Uh, if you guys can see here, we also have um, Playtex stand out, which we call the Loki, which um, we can feed, we can pick off algae from the reef. Um, everything's powered with double sided belt, if you, can, if you want to come here and see that. Uh, one thing you notice is that we have Swerve Tread on our rollers, and we, we actually like tested that, and you know, Swerve, Swerve Tread was like fantastic for, um, yeah, for that pickup. Uh, another thing here, you can see on this plate on the arm, there's a small tensioner blade bearing to tension this belt, because we noticed that for some reason it, the belt got really loose over time. Um, now up to the arm, this arm is driven with a planetary sprocket, uh, you want to come over here on this side. Uh, the, we're running a 30 to 1 reduction, and then if you can, yeah, there's, we have an encoder, a rev encoder, West Coast Protestant encoders can come in time, but we have a rev encoder, 1 to 1 ratio, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the spline XL is fixed to the, the elevator plates. Um, we did find an element analysis and we noticed that the, the points of most strain are on this plate and also on the spline itself, so we uh, beefed this plate up to a quarter inch. It's been working fantastic for us, no big issues. Um, and over here, there's also a small idler tension, uh, idler sprocket to tension the, the chain. A uh, small little cam pushes it. Support also been working fantastic. Um, one thing you'd also notice is that we have our motors up here, which might confuse some people because it's higher, like you're raising center of gravity. But we, the reason of our choice, the, the reason why we put the motors up here is to uh, provide counterbalance because it's on the opposite end of the, the pivot. Yeah. And moving on to the elevator, this year we uh, started using an internally rigged elevator and the reduction is uh, 50 to 14 with one crack in X60. And we strategically placed the belts inside the tubing so that we can use, utilize all these holes right here. And we have a physical hard stop um, with that's eighth aluminum right up here. And then also what we noticed is that the elevator needs to be very structurally sound. So we have this A structure right down here. And we have um, half inch head shaft with quarter 28 um, I, I, quarter 28 ball ends that physically pushes the elevator in the inside. So when the arm is moving and the elevator is moving up, the whole structure is very, very stable. Now moving on to the ground intake, this ground intake is able to intake the coral as well as the algae from the ground and it can score the coral in L1 and it can score the algae into the processor. The, we, both, we have two motors, one for the pivot which is a 48 to 1 gear reduction with a Kraken X60 and for the rollers is a 2 to 1 reduction with also a Kraken X60 and the uh, special um, part about this uh, ground intake is that we have a spline XL with a chain on one side so that these plates can revolute at the um, exact same degree and we also add added jingles here uh, on the mounting plates after we did a final element analysis so that we can strengthen these mounting plates on a perpendicular axis to the plates. Now moving on to the climber, so this is a donut climber where we have a hole 
inside of a robot and we have our two pairs of climber hooks that push against the cage and if you look at the geometry of the climber um we can show you from with this if you see the geometry of the climber as it pushes down the cage it goes from a larger radius to a smaller radius so that after it climbs due to the hard stops down here these lexan hard stops that uh, uh, the electric hard stops plus the weight of the robot as well as the gravity allows these um, this climber hooks to stay in place and our robot to uh, stay climbed even after we're disabled. So um, this allows us to not have a high, an extremely high gear reduction ratio as well as a we don't need a ratcheting um, system. We also do not need a non back travel system. So we were able to have a reduction of a 75 to 1 and we were able to climb really quickly by 5 inches off the ground from the ground to the wheel in a matter of half seconds. We could also pick up algae from the reef. And should we show this? This could score in the processor. Uh, we can also pick up algae with our froggy or our ground intake. All right, that was an awesome run through of your robot, Team 694. Can we go ahead and talk a little bit more about the software that goes in behind making this robot work? Yeah. So uh, this year, this is something that we experimented with over the off season, and we're carrying it over to the season now. We only have one driver, which enables us to have two human players. But what that means is. Um, our driver has to control this bot on his own, so we have to make it as simple as possible. Um, we have to automate as many things so that the driver has less to think about. So all of those scoring motions that you saw, let me disable the bot real quick. All of those scoring motions that you just saw on the reef a second ago, those are all one button. It'll bring the arm to the correct state and the elevator to the correct height. It'll align and then score whenever it's ready. Um, and by, to make it even more simpler, um, how the alignment works is it just picks the closest it picks the closest side of the reef and it goes by default it picks the closest branch that's close that the closest branch to the robot but the driver can pick left or right by moving the joystick left or right um we have a button for l l2 l3 l4 and l1 um and it'll just pick the pick the branch that it's scoring on um if the front of the robot is facing the reef it'll automatically score on the front if the back it's gonna score on the back um Another thing is, uh, if you're, we we really tried baby proofing the robot this year because it's really easy to like break the arm on the reef, or let's say you're scoring L4, the arm is kind of above the reef here, and then if you bring the arm down too soon, it's gonna like start hanging on the reef. Um, so what we did was we we added clearances to make sure the robot could back up before bringing the arm and elevator down. That way the driver doesn't accidentally break the robot. So I'll show you that real quick. We enable and Philip, can you scroll four? Yeah. Enabling. So go ahead and take us through it as it's operating. Yeah, so Philip's gonna click one button here to score L4. And it automatically scored on its own. And notice how the arm didn't immediately come back down. It waited for him to back up before coming down. This way it wouldn't hang on the reef. And same thing for the other levels, L3 and L2. And oh, so here's the cool thing that happened there. So in this moment, the robot was closest to this branch here, but Philip moved the joystick to the, to the left, which made it choose this branch over here. So even though it was closer to this one, he could choose the branch over here. Um, so that's the, the safety features that we have on the arm. Um, for the froggy, uh, this mechanism over here, if we try picking up a coral right next to the reef, we just stay here. If the arm, if, if the froggy tries coming up, it's gonna hit the reef, right? So even though Philip has let go of the intake button, it's gonna wait until he backs up from the reef to come back up. So if you just back up, now wait, we don't break that mechanism. So all our central components are right below the funnel, which is very accessible. So here's the PDH and here's the reel, and they're very, very accessible because we have this cover right here. 
And then going on to the limelight cooling system, due to overheating of the limelight, we were able to develop a cooling system in which there's a, a limelight, and then there's a thermal pad, and there's a heatsink, and a fan that blows against the crevices of the heatsink, so that the limelights were able to uh, cool off very quickly. And with, because the system was very uh, efficient, we also implemented it in the radio as well. So both the radio and the limelight are very cool. All right, thank you to Team 694 for taking us through your excellent robot this year. Currently ranked number one going into ELIMS. Good luck in the rest of the event, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. FIRST teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com contest.